So recently I got this amazing question. One of you girls asked, what if I'm saving sex for marriage and then I get married and I absolutely hate sex? And I was like, that is an amazing question. So we're gonna talk about it. I actually have three thoughts for you on this topic. Dawn, and if you're new here, this channel is all about helping to set you free from some of those false expectations or like legalistic stereotypes we have in our heads of what it means to be a Christian girl. So you can hit that subscribe button to come join us every week for more girl talk. So if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that James and I, my husband and I were both virgins when we got married and we definitely had gone further than we wanted to in some past relationships, but we had saved sex. We had saved a lot of stuff for marriage and we were really glad that we did. It was so special and so beautiful when we got married. I know that sounds so cliche and you're like, blah, but it was, it really was. But that being said, Sex was not amazing at first. It just wasn't. And it's easy sometimes to get married and think, that's all there is. Like, I waited my whole life for this, and that's all there is. And no, that's not all there is. It's just called, you're new to it. So I have a few thoughts for you today that maybe can help ease some of your fears about saving sex for marriage and hating it. So number one is what I already alluded to, which is sex is a learning curve. So for some women, they might just love sex immediately, but for a lot of women, myself included, at first it's not that great. Like our wedding night was really special. It was really beautiful. Like being so intimate with James for the first time, like it just was one of the most special nights of my life, like to be honest but it was not the best sex we've ever had. And then after that, as time went on, you know, after the honeymoon and stuff, like there were a couple months there when I felt like we were kind of stuck in a rut and I was like, why don't I love sex? I feel like I should love sex. Like I'm married, why don't I love it? Why don't I like really look forward to it? Like what's going on here? The reason was I had to learn my body. I had to learn how I worked, what made me tick, what things made me get in the mood for sex, what things made me enjoy sex more. And it was a learning process. Process. It took trying new things, seeing some that didn't work at all, seeing some that did work, and just figuring it out together. But you know what? That whole process built intimacy between me and James because we got to know each other better and we got to work through that together. And it was like an adventure to go on together. And sex now is so much better than it was. We have really good sex now if you want to know. <laughs> not to be weird, but it still is not the best it's going to be because the closer we grow together, and the more practice we have, it's like anything you need to practice in life, like a sport, an instrument, the more you practice, the better you get at it. And so that's actually why we created our video series called The Wedding Night Talks. You may have heard me talk about them before. They're linked down below. And it's basically 10 videos where I or James and I share about sex, the things that we think you should know before you get married, but also the things that would be helpful in those first few months of marriage or that first year of marriage as you're discovering yourselves, as you're figuring yourselves out together so that you'll have the tools you need to build a great sex life. Because that is one of my hopes and dreams for every woman is that she would have a great sex life in marriage. One other thing I'll note here is that sometimes people say it helps to practice before you get married um, and have sex with different people. Here's the thing with that. Sex is so intimate and so personalized to the person you're with that even if you had had sex before, you're still going to have to relearn yourself and how you are with this person, with your spouse. So I personally don't think that you need to practice with different people to enjoy sex. Actually, I know you don't because I know in my life that's true. So number two is make sure you're considering all the factors. There are a lot of factors that go into having a great sex life. And I'm just gonna share four here that can be big barriers for enjoying sex. Number one is a physical issue, for lack of a better word, something in your body that's not working correctly, that's making it actually uncomfortable to have sex. This is something that you should talk with your OBGYN about. One thing that they can tell you is, is everything working correctly or is there something that you should know about your body and something you should do to be able to enjoy sex more? Number two is any past trauma. If you've experienced trauma in the past, whether that was assault, abuse, molestation, or even just a really bad relationship in the past, that can totally impact the way you experience sex in the present. And so that's something I highly, highly encourage you to see a counselor about and start talking through those things with a counselor or with someone you really trust to find some healing from those things so that they don't impact your sex life negatively. Number three is 
patience. If you are impatient with yourself or if your partner is impatient with you, that is going to make it so hard to enjoy sex. You really have to both be patient with each other and be able to just kind of let go of some of those expectations you have of what sex should be like and just take it for what it is and like be patient. And the fourth thing is just your mindset, like how you think about sex. I know for a lot of women raised in purity culture, quote unquote, they can think of sex as bad. So it's like, sex is bad, sex is bad, sex is bad. And then you get married and people are like, sex is good, have as much as you want. And you're like, but I've always thought of sex as bad, so how do I make that switch? And that can be really tough for some women to work through. And so first off, that's why I think it's so important to never think of sex as bad. Think of sex as good, as beautiful, as a gift from God because it is. And don't think of sex as a no. Think of it as a wait, something you're waiting for that's good and that you're excited about, not something that you're saying no, 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 that's bad. But if you get married and you've always thought of sex as bad, that's another thing that you could even work through with someone you trust, with a mentor, with a counselor, and just kind of talk about it. I find that talking about things really helps get them out there and can bring healing to us. So those are some factors to consider. And the third point I have is that compatibility is about more than just sex. In fact, I don't think that you even have to have had sex with someone to know if you're compatible with that person. I know that's a kind of a controversial statement, but here's why. Because in order to have great sex, you need to be with somebody who's patient, who's kind, who's giving of themselves and is gonna help you figure out what you enjoy instead of just being in it for them and their own pleasure. And those are all character traits that you can see in somebody before you've ever had sex with them. And if you are already having sex with someone and you could be having great sex, if those three things are not there, then eventually your sex life is not going to be that great. I really believe that. So other things to consider are, are you attracted to that person? Do you want to be intimate with them? That's a good sign. That's a good thing to want to be attracted to the person you're with. So another question that you might have is, is physical attraction even important in a Christian relationship? Isn't that kind of shallow? That's something I wondered a lot when I was younger. So I have a video all about that for you right up here. So I love you girls and I'll see you there. Bye.